we're just finishing up in clubhouse it's just the uh, final two minutes uh, and then uh, people will join us and we'll go live uh, well we are live but uh So we, uh, we've run a clubhouse um, on social selling and influence, uh, which has been really well attended, great debate. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring it over here to, to LinkedIn Live, YouTube, uh, Facebook, and, um, and debate what we've, uh, we, we've been talking about. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll be picking that up in a couple of seconds. So we've been talking about automation. We've been talking about uh, omni-channel. What is it? Uh, what it? What? What uh, could it be? Um, and we've been talking about those things. And we're just moving across from Clubhouse. We're just closing out the Clubhouse right now. And um, so uh, we're just about. So happy to take all your, your comments and uh, uh, the discussion. So we've uh, just finished up the, uh, the clubhouse. Um, now waiting for uh, people to, to join us on LinkedIn Live. And uh, you can start asking your questions. We've been talking about um, what is omnichannel? What does it mean? Um, what does it mean to you? What does it mean in the past? What's it going to mean in the future? Um, and um, uh, we're, we're going to bring that chat straight back here onto, onto LinkedIn Live. There's a couple of people that want to join up on the. Uh... So it's the first time that I've used uh, Restream. So um, we're just waiting for the people to come and join us um, and then uh, we'll get uh, talking. Uh, yeah, it, yes, Jonathan, it's being recorded. Um, all the Restreams are being recorded. Um, so uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. I'm just waiting for Eric Doyle and um, uh, and Adam Gray to and Rob Durant to 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 join. Hello, Adam. How you doing? I'm good, mate. How are you? Good. Yeah, I'm just waiting for the other people to 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 join. That was a very interesting session on Clubhouse, wasn't it? Yeah, I just need to turn you up. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. So we've had uh, one question so far from Jonathan Strauss about is it being recorded? Is this being recorded? Yes, and it is. Marvellous. And we have um, seven uh, watchers. Wow. Yeah. So this. I don't is know where Rob and I don't know where Rob and um, Eric is. Ah, oh, Peggy, connected through Clubhouse. Excellent.
Hi, Danielle. Danielle, it's, it's Adam, not Eric. Here we go. There's Eric. I'm terrible, sorry. I couldn't find the link. <laughs> Likewise. That's okay. Got to be smarter than technology. So, 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 Eric, so Eric says, if you do a LinkedIn Live, don't ever go, are we live? Are we live? Are we live? Can you don't text me if we're live? Sorry, Eric. I just couldn't. <laughs> we are live. Should we take the link and each of us do a quick LinkedIn post with the link on it saying come hi on. hi Thomas hi Danielle so we so yeah if you want to Adam yeah but we need to get the chat going because we did have 13 people we've now got five <laughs> so we, we need to we you know if we if we need to get the conversation going so Eric yeah do, do you want to start with what with, with the discussion that we had on Clubhouse about Omnichannel yeah, sure. So um, I was lucky enough to be asked to be host this week, and we uh, we picked up on something that I've been musing about, speaking with prospects and clients about this week and previous weeks about the whole issue of um, of digital dominance. So with everybody that's um, suffered greatly in twenty with pipeline shortages and and lead shortages and all of that, a whole heap of people have jumped onto social to just smash connection requests smashing up lots of content out there um the whole issue of be being dominant in that space and how omni channeling being everywhere or certainly being in the right places has been a big topic of discussion recently we talk about digital dominance a lot um um i, I guess many times we get linked we get lumped in with the, the the linkedin trainers which we're not that that strategic social media piece and digital dominance is becoming more and more to the fore so i thought it'd be good that we uh, discussed as a team what omni channeling meant in 2021 um how it how it used to be how we omni channeled uh, and uh, and some of the best ways of doing that and what sort of the perceived results and real results that one might see if you start to multi-channel so that was it and we had some uh, we had some pretty good debate so um i guess the the first question i had was was it took us way back to the days when um you had long hair and sideburns tim and stripy shirts with braces and used to be turning up outside these big corporate offices and with, with, big mobile phone. with, with the mobile phone smashing deals on the way up the stairs um and you know and a box all cavalier it's all right <laughs> yes keeping it real keeping yeah. it real so that the question we started was um from those days the concept of money omni channeling is not new we just do it differently so how did we do it back then and how did we do how do we do it today and i really enjoyed it i think we came out with some really really good stuff today Loved yeah it. i think it, i mean we know we talked about in the past there was lots of channels in terms of facts there was advertising there was tele the telephone you know cold calling um, you know, that kind of started in 1980. And then there was this amazing thing called email that kind of started out in 1990, 30 years ago. Um, and um, and I, I also talked about how the fax you used to get these people um, sending you all these spam faxes. And they used to put a, a, a basket at the end and you just it used to let everything go into the basket. Pretty much Oi. the way that I run my inbox, uh, email inbox today. <laughs> yeah. I still to this day and and, and 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 you know strike me down for this I still the first thing I do when I get up in the morning is reach for my phone once I've got a cup of coffee in my hand and I delete the emails that I delete every day <laughs> I do it I do it I do it I just go through and I'm like swipe 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 get rid of them get on with my day I mean that, that needs to stop right yeah sure. you need to get you need to unsubscribe from stuff and start <laughs> yes, building yes. some rules I mean yeah. I've got two for I've got seven emails in my inbox you know, it, that reminds me of something I wrote down early on in, in the session this morning. Tim, you said, who was telling you email could never catch on? Oh, yeah, yeah. Someone, a friend of mine did some uh, um, a, some advice for the consultancy for a board. And the, 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 the consultancy was around email. Um, and they put a business case together and the board rejected it and said, no, it will never catch on because lawyers have to have signatures on pieces of paper. Yeah, uh, you, told that story on, you told that story it's on the podcast, Janice. 
it's a great example of how um, technology is just taken over and and you can't beat technology no uh, in, in fact uh, probably 20 years ago uh, i was pitching to a large german bank uh, their kind of tech committee and uh, one of the people on the committee in the drinks reception afterwards one of the people on the committee said i don't think this internet thing will ever catch on and it, it's ironic isn't it that that when it challenges our view of the world and challenges what we're comfortable with or experienced with uh, we want to talk about how it isn't going to work in order that it gives us comfort and i, I think that that's that's one of the key things um uh, that we see with this whole omni-channel idea you know maybe you're comfortable on linkedin maybe you're comfortable on twitter maybe you're comfortable on youtube but actually you have to be comfortable on lots of different platforms because it's where your customers are and you have to adapt in the same way that linkedin was a shock for everybody when it first came out you know it was a self-updating roller decks once upon a time and then it became something which was more than that and it became a place where people met to do business and I think that the interesting thing about uh, about these new channels like Clubhouse and like LinkedIn Live that we're on now um, is as they as they come out, uh, we have to adapt. We have to try them. We have to see whether or not they're going to work for us and our customers and act accordingly. And if they are, well, the lesson in there is that we have to make bake that into part of our normal behavior, because if we don't, we're missing a trick. And, and it's and William basically said it was your your story was the funny one, Adam. Well, right. we don't know that. It could well have been your story. <laughs> you know, uh, Tim, this this reminds me of when, since I'm a little bit older, when we uh, we were told when we were first in sales and when I joined a copier sales business in the 90s, hey, you need to join two chambers of commerce. You need to be in a service group. You need to be in a networking group. And you need to cold call eight hours a day. But multi-channeling then was you going to different meetings physically and you – having to expend all of this travel time and it worked because that's all we had you know anything was better than cold calling but multi-channeling what we're talking about here omni-channel as as you guys shared before is how can we use technology to be around our customers in a more efficient way and it's no different from what you're used to analog we're just doing it digitally so so we've had a question from uh, monica singh um which is ideal for um this which is that um she's saying that um she's looking for ways to approach a client base they're not responding to email and calls um how does she contact that group i mean an open question to everybody oh man which, man um, which group uh sorry mike carry on just monica do you mind sharing with us what specific audience you're trying to reach While we're waiting for her, her answer, why don't you take that away, Eric? Yeah, I was just thinking, just uh, until we get the specifics, Monica, this is very generic, but um, one of the things we would advise is if this is a, a reasonably large organization that isn't responding to emails or calls, we would, we would like you to put a strategic plan in place of how you're going to connect with this, uh, with this organization. Um, one of the things we would we would ask you to do is connect with people that might influence or amplify your message. Maybe you're just going after the buyers, and the buyers are a bit busy, and we can expect that they probably are. Um, it's it's about some twenty people in the automotive industry, right? Okay, automotive, great. So so pick your pick your my my suggestion would be, and this is a bit like asking the chefs what they would do with a chicken in the fridge on the Saturday morning cookery shows. But my suggestion would be. Um, Find the company that you're interested in. Find them on 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 LinkedIn first of all, um, and then start to have a look at how the company is represented. Um, start to connect with some of the managers in that organisation and build relationships. We don't have to be going after buyers at this point. We don't have to be going after the senior people at this point. Um, start to build relationships in the sort of belly fat around the middle of the organisation. And then once you've got a good representation there and you've got some interaction going, you might end up in some calls from that, you might end up on some calls, depending on how you're pushing those relationships. Then you can start to march up. Once you've got a good representation around the middle, the middle of the, the organization, you can start to strategically move up to directors, uh, move up to vice presidents, and then you're gathering momentum within the organization, all the while you're looking to get those people on a call. Um, and you're, but one of the things we talk about is we're not directly selling at these people. We're not, we're trying to bring them into your life to experience what it's about 
like getting to know you without so, being so, getting so, that Eric, so why aren't we directly selling to these people well none of i guess i guess you have to you have to reflect you have to look in the mirror do you like it when you open your dms and someone who's just connected with you starts to sell sell at, at you we don't we don't like it we don't like it at all none of us do none of us like being being broadcast that when we've just accepted someone and and opened up our precious little network and someone suddenly they are quoting prices at you and deals and all of that that's not how we work these days um contact at the lower level start to build relationships there and then work up through the through the organization all the while not threatening not salesy just building relationships and at any opportunity you can find to get people on a call to empathize with their day find out what it's all about share the experiences that you're having and then work in what you do and this is all beneficial stuff so, all beneficial so what stuff. roger is saying here in terms of so you're suggesting you may find the first contact at a low level um to leverage that and then to climb the ladder Absolutely. And keep doing that. Keep doing that across the organization. Before you know it, you'll have a brilliant, brilliant representation in there. And a lot of people will be talking and, about you. And, um, and, and Peggy um, has said that uh, she agrees with that. Net, it's about networking into the organization, building trust and a relationship. Do, do we agree with that? Yeah. 100%. 100%. And, and Monica's, Monica's responded, maybe you should start very simple then. 100%. Yeah, start very simple. I mean, uh, lots of people overcomplicate this. Lots of people overcomplicate this. Make a little plan. Have a look around about who you think might be an interesting person to connect to. Don't necessarily think you have to go for the, the CEO or the or the, the head of purchasing or whatever. <laughs> think about building a relationship with this organization um, in a more abstract sense. So do I have to connect with the people that are going to be the people that give me a purchase order? We're going to get there eventually. We're going to get there. It doesn't have to take an inordinate amount of time. Um, but just just that. So how long do you need to build a relationship with the manager? Yeah, so, so Roger's asked how long do you need to, how long does this take? Because a lot of people say to me, social selling takes a long time. I don't have the time. Well, it's that picture Eric shared on the beach. Yeah. Well, That's well, the answer, Roger. Uh, well, but, uh, well, uh, sorry. Uh, I guess Roger might not have seen that. So, so I guess it's case by case, Roger. Case by case, you're going to know. Um, you're going to know fairly quickly when you start having conversations and building relationships with people. Who's going to be able to help you in an organisation? And that's where you need to put the focus in and the effort. Not to say that we're going to ignore everyone else. Certainly not. But you're going to see where the little gems are, um, and you're going to know it. You, you you look as if you round the round the round the the block with me maybe a couple of times. Um, you're going to know when that beautiful little clinch point is where you can say, "Listen, this has been great. Um, I've got I've got some interesting stuff to share. Can we get on a call? And can you maybe bring your manager or director in because I think there's some real real gems here that we can share. You're going to know. You're going to feel it. Because I think I think one of the things that we talked about today in Clubhouse was about creating conversations mm. and using social media as a platform to create those conversations. Um, and sharing content that would resonate with your buyers, not resonate with you, um, and that resonates with your buyers. And let's not forget that when everybody, anybody likes or comments on that content, that is an opportunity for you to have a conversation. So, so one of the things that we've always done in sales is look for commonality. So there's a picture just behind me, which is my partner's father. He was a squadron leader in a Spitfire um, uh, squadron during the war handsome um uh, dapper um but i have lots of conversations about him because his picture is right behind me and they say who's that person in the uniform and what we're doing is that we're looking for that commonality and all we're doing is place doing putting content on social to allow us to have those conversations yeah it, if i may it, what we're talking about at this point is really almost mid-process tactics. How do I reach out to them? What are those meetings? How do I upscale? But there's a whole large piece that goes before that. You have to be helpful. You have to be approachable. And when you do it that way, you don't know where the opportunities are going to come at you. It's once they start to come at you and you intentionally go out and seek other activities, that's when we can start talking about these mid-process tactics and, and what does that look like and how do we scale that up so, so let me share this from danielle first first this quote um great quote love that um 
Adam and I went to see a, a nice hockey game in um, um, Winnipeg many a couple of years ago. We had a great time. Yeah. Um, and uh, but I'm also going to put up uh, Monica's question because I think that kind of keeps the thing flowing. And I'd be interested in the panel's um, views about creating adverts on uh, on LinkedIn and using those as a way of generating. Let me just interrupt you there. <laughs> Sorry, that, that, that was a joke. That's what advertising is. So uh, Tim Tim said something. Is when we first started the business years ago. Uh, Tim said something, and he thought that we should have as our strap line working towards an ad free world and i just love that idea you know advertising is fundamentally bad and it's bad because you you are shoehorning your content into my line of sight and that's the way to make me hate your brand rather than love your brand gary v once had a rant about this and he said uh, it was uh, it was during the point that it was and i don't understand uh, basketball but it was uh, there was some <laughs> flying of players going on, and he said that, and I'll use the brand name here. He said that Samsung kept interrupting his newsfeed with pictures of their TV and 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 videos of their TV, and he would pick up his phone and every time he would try to, to try to stop this from happening, so he would keep pressing it to 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 quit out of the advert so he could see the newsfeed, and because he's got big fingers, he kept clicking the advert. And he said, uh, so that we've got the advertising guy, you know, we've got the, the the marketer that's saying, oh, look at this guy. He's really loving our content. He keeps looking at the advert for the TV. Meanwhile, Gary's on the phone to his wife saying, we are never going to buy a Samsung product until I'm dead. <laughs> so hate the brand as a result of that. And, and, you know, if you want to see the full detrimental power of advertising, I think that's best exhibited in that first 12 seconds of the YouTube clip that you're desperate to watch. That's the longest 12 seconds in the world. You hate the company that interrupts your viewing pleasure. <laughs> so, so what do you think about what Rogers basically said there? I don't use ads. I work to build my network of contacts constantly, then post wrote Absolutely perfect, Roger. You've hit the bullseye with that. Uh, ads, ads are bad. Ads are bad. You know, I, I shared something with the guys earlier. I got a, a basically an advertising email from a company saying, I can absolutely help you with your Forex trading at Digital Leadership uh, uh, Associates. It's like, we don't do any Forex trading. So you've got no idea what you're talking about. And that's, thank you. They, they, they're great, aren't they? Uh, the guitars, that is. He um, can't play them. No, no, that's it. You're better at buying than playing. Um, but but the, the 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 point is that the adverts are the thing that get in the way of you having a relationship. Build the relationships properly. You can't advertise to find yourself a life partner. You can't advertise to find your perfect client. You do it through building relationships. Peggy absolutely nailed it there. Good conversations, build relationships, and that leads to opportunities. You know, you get opportunities because the person wants to work with you, not because you've you've jumped in front of somebody else in the queue and got in their face. You know, that 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 may have worked in the 80s or the 90s or even the 2000s, but it certainly isn't going to work in the 2020s. Can I, just, know, can I, just, can I just pull that attention back one second, Mike, uh, to, to what uh, Roger's comment was? I do this with content to help retain my prospects mind share. Mind share. Beautiful. That is yep. gorgeous, isn't it? I love that. I was going to address that one. I'm going to take uh, a screen grab of that particular comment and I shall, re I shall steal smile, it. Smile, everybody. Ride. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Rod, sorry, Roger, but we're go you're going to get six blogs about retaining mindshare next week. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I thought Roger was spot on because, like, the the problem with interrupt marketing is you're trying to avoid answering the real question, which is why the heck should I listen to you, right? You're just trying to jump the line and get in front and pitch, and you're eventually going to have to answer the question: Who are you? Why should I listen to you? And why the hell should I believe you? And and what the basics that Rob was alluding to earlier and which everyone else here does better than me is this. You have to be attractive. You have to create a profile on whatever medium you're using that starts to answer that question. Why the heck should I listen to you? Well, like, why, why are you trusted? You use, the word, you use the word attractive, which segues perfectly into the comment that's on the screen. William's comment. Again, this is great blog fodder. Try yeah. automating a first date. You will die alone. 
I well, I always say, Adam, I always that. say, like, <laughs> it, it, when you show up, like, it's like, doing this direct pitching is like showing up at a blind date without wearing clothes. It's just probably not going to end well. Like, do the basics of civilization. Don't show up naked. Yeah, very true. Very true. So there are billions of dollars spent on <clears throat> advertising. You can't tell me that it doesn't work. We'll hear. But what about this? How is the success of advertising measured? But did, Likes, you ask, views, shares. Well, a, a lot of a lot of advertising agencies will say uh, they will say it's about building brand recognition. So you can't measure it, but it creates a thousand <laughs> noise in the marketplace. I, I remember uh, somebody use the phrase uh, it's all about the data without data you're just someone else with an opinion and it strikes me that 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 idea that you're building noise you're building a buzz in the marketplace that absolutely is the equivalent of that if it's if it's being successful show me don't show me views don't show me impressions don't show me impacts show me the money you know how many times did the phone ring as a result of your campaign not at all well then it didn't work <laughs> and so often we, we we are sold on the beauty of a concept you know have you checked out our new website it's great we've got this lovely elegant new uh navigation on the website and we've optimized it in the following ways and we've we've got a new look and feel to it and a new skin to it that's lovely but that's all subjective stuff does the phone ring more no it isn't working then and and you know we have to be really pragmatic about this don't we well at the end of the day advertising is about bidding right because advertising is an inhumane way of getting attraction because fundamentally if you play the advertising game you're competing with google with apple with cadillac and all these brands and unless you're one of those brands you're playing the loser game you need to be human you need to be agile and you need to double down on what actually works, which is you're smaller and you care about your customers more. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, Danielle just made a comment about uh, CTR, click through rate, click -through rate. On, on posts. So a week ago, I did a quick post, which was a picture of some young person in a, in quotes, click farm. So it's, it's a young girl, probably in her teens, and she's sitting at uh, a huge bank of phones all wired up and she's going and clicking ads. Now, I'm not saying that all advertising is like this, but increasingly, and, and uh, uh, an associate of ours, uh, Stephen, uh, he, he for, for a while, he was focusing on this ad fraud, as he called it, and publicizing the fact that so much of this goes on whether or not you're the social network or whether or not, or Google for that matter, or whether or not you're the ad agency, there's a huge incentive for you to engage people for $2 an hour to go through clicking hundreds of ads from hundreds of different devices. And the reality is that the only output from this is uh, you're driving up the metrics which the client is being charged for. There's no benefit in this like when you do some employee advocacy and everybody that likes the, the the post works in the company it's like they're not going to buy your product they work for you the reason they're liking it is they're hoping for a promotion and and the reality is that often we're looking at the we're looking at the wrong things i think you know we're trying to justify our existence oh we've got 150 likes on this post yeah they all work for you and so one of the things that rob said in the clubhouse which i wrote down um was um there was a number of really good quotes and rob said something which is that because because rob was asked the question about will brands use clubhouse and and clubhouse is as it for those of people that don't know it's it's just like a radio show so there's no chat there's no video there's no way for you to actually put up an advert or anything like that and people vote with their feet if they're not interested in your in your room they just leave um, and and he said something that brands need to facilitate conversations, not dominate them. Um, at the moment, brands have one way conversations. What does the team think about that? Rob. Yeah, it, it, 
It's well, well, to 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 just chime in on on Rob's point. Um, I think Danielle put it beautifully that the the people are winning the the battle, um, over over the uh, the brands. Bye, William. Bye, William. See you, William. See you, man. Um, so so yeah, I think that I think the the people are winning. The people the people are the voice of the brand in twenty twenty one, and that voice, if it's just corporate smoosh is being ignored if that voice is their own if it's interesting if it's authentic and intriguing and challenging and all of that is what's winning that war over the brand i think well you know it's it's interesting like if ads were so great we wouldn't have any salespeople and businesses would never go out of business <laughs> right you, know, you i mean you'd never you'd never go out of business you there would be no competition but it, it i mean it's just a it's just a, a fallacy you know the, the reality is is if you're running a business and if you're in sales, you're running a business, you know, if you're in, if you're running a business, do you want the future of your economic prosperity determined by an algorithm or do you want it determined by relationships? You have an opportunity on social using Eric Doyle's favorite word strategy. You have an opportunity on social to control your destiny if you are a virtuous human being. Disclaimer: If you are a a rascal, right? If you if you are a, 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 a oh, yeah, if you're a rascal, rascal. if you're a scallywag, like, <laughs> if you're a douchebag, this isn't going to work for you, right? Because this is something Adam talks about all the time: transparency. This what we are talking about only works if you actually like human beings. Okay, well, and if you'll excuse me for a moment, I'm afraid I I have had somebody arrive in my Zoom room for a scheduled meeting. So thank you all very much. Thank you very much indeed for the audience uh, for, for being part of this. And I'll catch up with everybody very thank soon. You. Thanks, Adam. Cheers. So, Tim, you need to take away on the transparency thing because that's the thing. This is, What we're talking about is not for everyone. Like if you have no morals, if you have no values, if you hate people and are a vampire, advertising is wonderful. Are you just like the so so you you, you coined the phrase today the M I K E drop the mic drop it's you're on bad. fire you're absolutely on fire mic drop so I Monica like leaving as well Monica thank you so much for today thank, I hope you got thank something you. out of it thank you so much for your uh, your engagement really very much so so um so something so I'm going to ch slightly change the subject so Priscilla said something um about um um uh but about being bombarded with adverts and emails and cold calls which was because i said i because i'm i'm like i'm like bored of it and maybe bored is actually a negative thing and i need to i need to stop doing that but she said that she thought that she'd got smart to it um now i'm a person now um, uh, ios 13 was fantastic for me because i know that if if any call that i get that's not in my address book just goes straight through to voicemail so you can't cold call me and 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 I'm a I'm a horrible one for setting up rules on my email that if you spam me once, um, you, I create a rule and immediately you will always go to the bin ever ever since because I I can't live without um I can't live without uh, um only a couple of emails in my inbox. Now I may be an exception, but um there must be other people out there that that are bored of all of the interruptions and all of the rubbish that we get sent. Um, I mean Adam gave an example there where. Um, what's it? It's a credit card, isn't it? In the UK, it's the one of the new um, challenger banks, and they're just sending out crap um, because they can. But but what's happened? Why 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 are we so bored of it? Or why have we got smart to it? And why are we stopping it? Well, it's it's even beyond that. Just from a coaching perspective, hu human beings have only got so many calories they can burn per day. Like your brain runs on glucose, and there's a lot of research about what's happening when you get too much stimulation fight or flight you know at, we we aren't that far removed from running around trying not to be eaten by animals yeah at least at least in scotland i don't know <laughs> but you know and, and so the, the real yeah, yeah it's very good that's, that's, very good that's, i, very I good. pick on him because he's got a nicer mountain bike but the, the reality is that you're 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 playing a short game if you're trying to overwhelm people eventually they're going to either tune out or they're going to fight back. And so I think you're far better doing what Tim always talks about, which is how do you close the gap? How do you bring people to you? Because that's the answer to being bored. Don't be boring. 
it's, a, it's, bit... an, it's an interesting point, Mike, because it's not often talked about, which is the way that what happens with all this noise at the moment is it pushes people away. And I mean, Peggy made a, um, um, a great comment there about people do business with people you trust. It's true. And trust actually doesn't what? take a, a, lot, a lot of time to build up. If you look at someone on social, you can go, you jump to a conclusion and go, I think I trust them just by looking at their profile. And, and what that, that does is it actually brings people closer to you. And there's, this is a transformation that's taken place on the internet and social media that, that no one's talking about, which is that traditional sales and marketing pushes people away, but you can use social as a way to bring people together. And what happens about in that bringing together is there's a beauty in that space. The little, the little, the, the aid to connection of those little synapses is, is helping, helping and assisting people and, and being, being a source of advice that, that brings us closest together, allows us to make those little connections. Um, I, I'm, I'm just going back to not so long ago in my professional life when the idea of sharing advice and helping on social was so alien to me as the MD of a, a service company because we we hid all of our secret sauce. Hide your secret sauce. Hide your secrets. Hide everything you're doing. Don't be sharing anything too much. Only put out press releases about how great we are and how much money we've made and those big contract wins and all of that because everything is good here. And no, 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 no way will we discuss anything that's sh a slight shade of darkness about something that's gone wrong in the organization. We don't share any of that. It's only good news stories we put out. That that was our strategy. That was and this uh, replicated by everybody in the street, in the city, in the sector, in on the planet. Yeah. Um, so the whole idea of and I've seen I've I've seen it. I, I I I put it out regularly and comment to people when people put up posts saying, "What's the thing that you've learned most? That's been the biggest shock to you since you know over twenty and into twenty one is that the more we help on social, the more we assist, the more we give on social, the more we get back." Just like you this. Know, it's interesting, Eric. Like, I think you played some rugby. Yep. Right? One of the things that's important is you have to understand what field you're going to play upon. And, and, and I will say, I was a excellent youth soccer player, but it became immediately apparent oh. at, at a certain age that I wasn't good enough. Nice. I, I saw that, Tim, by the way. Yep. Yeah. It's <laughs> I'm American, America. Anyways, uh, but the point America. was, is like, it, that's all I'm saying. It became immediately apparent at a certain point that I was not qualified to play on that field. I had to find a different field. And like social is real. It's not the fantasy land, no matter what all these influencers and experts tell you that you can do anything on it. You have to approach this logically with a business mindset. And you have to, you have to also like, what are you doing that works off of social, like what's true and what, what works and then take that there and, and make sure that like, and I will say this, Tim's proven it, you know, you can compete at an international massive level if you're strategic and you make sure that you can deliver. Yep. 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 We, we've never advertised. We've never cold called. Um, we've never sent emails. Uh, we were a global company within two years of startup. Um, if you take Eric, Eric started, he's grown 400% this, um, last year during the pandemic. I mean, which, and he's never advertised, never cold called and never sent a, a, an email. Never will. And, and, um, you know, how, 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 you know, how many other companies are grown by 400% in, in a pandemic? So bringing it back to that advertising question, if I can, and Danielle gave us some metrics. What are the what are the KPIs that we use for social? It looks like those same things, does it not? I think I think one of the things it's a really good point, Rob, because one of the things that um, people often say is that likes and comments is vanity metrics, mm -hmm. and likes and comments uh, 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 is is actually gold. It's not necessarily something. Well, you you can measure it, and it's a it's an indicator. But it's the likes and comments that creates the conversations um, and and shows that because, as I said earlier on, if someone if you post something, someone likes it, you have something in common. You've got an op opportunity to have a conversation with them. That um, ability to do that is just immense. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, we we give. You mentioned earlier on. We 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 often use, and I write about in my blogs, uh, an example from Eric posting about his son's birthday on the beach. Um, his son Austin was sixteen, um, probably this, this time last year, wasn't it, uh, Eric? It was June June time uh, last year. June, yeah. Okay, right. He's a June baby, and um, uh, of course, it took him ten minutes to do it, and you got one hundred and sixty-eight likes, and um, was it thirty-four comments? something like that yeah so when you take out the fact that his mates liked it and and the people he knows liked it there was 84 likes and comments or 84 opportunities for, for him to then go and have a conversation with people now when you go through that 84 and say okay that person isn't my target market or that wizard person isn't senior enough i think they got down to about 20 something but like ultimately that. you got from that post um You've got six C level meetings. You've got uh, of those six C level meetings, two people asked for a proposal, and you've had one purchase order. And it took you ten minutes to put that post up. Yep, and that was just one day's work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there is no demand. There is no demand generation um, method out there. Advertising, cold calling, email that can get you six six C level meetings, two proposals, and one purchase order in ten minutes. Nope. No, From a picture. Awesome. From a picture that you took From, on his iPhone. Yeah, and I, and and again, the the the, the follow up to that is, and then we we the same the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day. Then take that across six people, twenty people, thirty, fifty people in your organization. It's enormous. Enormous. So Rogers just said, likes and comments tell you you've hit the interest point of the contact. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. You have to recognize that the interest level then expand out that more directly. And those who have showed interest, it's like tracking a well done email program. Um, you track the, you're going to type something else. Um, you track the engagement and, ta and yeah, target those absolutely. key responders. It's up in the yeah. corner. Yeah. Thanks, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> Another mic drop moment. Yes. So, um, uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, I think there the key was something is you've got to follow up. Sorry, Mike. Go on. I was going to say the the key is, and this is something that that Tim teaches and everyone here teaches, is like you you can't just do a random act of social. If you get the likes and the follow ups and you get the engagement, you have to do something. But that something cannot be transactional. Would you guys agree? Because Eric, you followed up on the interest in your photo, but did you say, hey, let's book an appointment and I can pitch you? Uh, no, no, I uh, we, 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 built, we, we connected, we had a bit of chit chat. We established the fact that we both had common interests. Um, the reason that I connected is because that this person was interesting to me and I felt I could be interesting to them. That's got to be something in it too, right? Not just interesting to me. I think I can be interesting to you. And I think if we meld our minds together and join these little synapses together, I think we can't see it right now. But I think further down the line, we're going to realize that we can be really helpful to each other. And that help can be range from just good friends. We actually entertain each other and just make each other laugh and giggle. And uh, right all the way through to, uh, you know, you might want to engage me or I might want to engage you in a, piece of commercial interaction um so I, I love that the fact that when we connect with people we don't really know we realize there's something interesting we think there's a little spark there we have a look at a profile and we think yeah that that's interesting but i love for me it's about what happens after that the work that you put in the relationships you establish and what comes out of that the little roses that grow are just beautiful because one of the examples yeah. was that you you met a guy from um he was a um, private equity company PE company um and you had a conversation with him and he said i really love this and he recommended then to you to the the the, co um, the companies that um, within the pe group yeah see, exactly. see you peggy thank you thanks peggy you know eric i got another question for you you know when, when you look at this process there is no magic bullet and not everyone that you interact with is going to like you or want to talk to you yeah. But, you know, and so I think that's where a lot of people get hung up on social. I know I did. I was on your podcast five years ago, Tim. And, you know, I had to marinate a little while in the refrigerator 
before I was able to come on board, you know, and that's just because I'm dumb, you know, soccer. Garlic. We, put, we sent you, I sent you some garlic. Yeah. It should have been more, more salt. But, but the point being is like, ultimately we have to accept that people want to be validated personally. It's a, it's a basic human need. And so when you're in sales, you have to understand that if they think you're only after their pocketbook, that's not going to build relationships because, you know, even though you want access to the pocketbook, the human being's got to make the decision. So date the person, not the money. So what, one of the things, uh, the last thing I wrote, wrote down in the clubhouse was actually a Mike Garrison uh, quote. Uh, and the question was around, OK, so um, how are you going to do this? What, what are you going to do? So and I think someone used an analogy about if you're going to go to Everest, how do you do? How do you, how do you go to Everest? Um, and the thing that you said, Mike, was pick a guide. So talk us through that. So it's it's really interesting. Do it yourself. D DIY has a I, I don't know how it is over, you know, across the pond. But in America, there is a overinflated value on figuring out yourself. And I don't think that I don't think that's a really successful trend unless you're a, a scientist or an engineer. And so fundamentally, you have a choice. You can try and figure it out all, all out on your own. And if you haven't already, the chances are you won't. The other option you have is if you've created an awareness in your side yourself that there is something better, that that you you have hope now that you're listening to this or you've seen some posts, how do I get to my destination better, right? Why do we use GPS? So when you're looking at what we do at DLA, we're offering to be a global positioning system to help you get to your destination. And we're going to do it just like a GPS does. We're going to help you figure out where you want to go. What's the destination? Like You enter the address, and then what happens? You go along the route. We measure the speed, right? We, we look for accidents. We look for detours. Maybe we throw up a couple of, hey, you know, get a Hardee's meal here or whatever. But that's the, the principle of a guide. And that is what I believe makes this process better. Don't, don't seed your company's individualism and your creativity to a software program or a hard system engage with someone if it's not us best of luck but engage with someone as a guide that's going to listen to you and create it around you because the system only works if it's about the human beings the system right. it's social for god's sake you know the fallacy of diy rob, no. rob's, a big, rob's a big diy guy by the way Thank you. We all standing on the shoulders of those that came before us, whether we acknowledge that or not. Thanks, Eva. Thanks, Eva. And I loved when you used the Mount Everest uh, analogy because early on in um, the Sales Enablement Society, uh, I was asked, we were all asked, well, what would be one word that describes what we do? The one I came up with was Sherpa. I love the thought of being a Sherpa. I love guiding people through the peaks and valleys of the highest points in their career. You know that but 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 just real yeah. quickly, rucksack, isn't it? Really quickly, yes. Sher Sherpas are not guides. Okay. All right. So I'm just saying because I'm a mountaineer, right? Oh. And so when you're when you're making an analogy, Sherpas carry the packs. They they okay. that's what a Sherpa is designed to help you get to the top by carrying the weight. And there is a role for that. We learn, every, we learn something every day, Eric, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. But, you, do. but the, the Sherpas in social are your employees, your teammates, your your customers. It's your connections because these are the people when you connect with them authentically that help you to the destination. But the guide is the one who says, OK, I understand that you want to get to Everest. We're not going this way. There is a canyon, a crevasse, or there's an avalanche potential. The guide is the strategic vision. And oftentimes, you've got a guide at the base camp, and then you have a guide that goes with you up the mountain. So, so Gary stops. Exactly. He's, he's, he's a good mate of mine. Um, he says that expedition leader is more of a guide. I, I, like, this, I like this, how we've got into a, a, a debate about guides. 
it, it's it's known it's, it's known as a rabbit hole. It's a guide rabbit hole. I like I like I like the I like the analogy we sometimes use. I know this isn't all about analogies, but the fact that Rafa Nadal, um, Djokovic, Roger Federer, the legends of uh, modern men's tennis, all have a coach sitting up there. All have a coach sitting up there who might not be and probably is not. In fact, definitely is not a current global legend in tennis. They're all they're all people from sometimes outside tennis. Some, sometimes from other sports, sometimes ex-legends that are a bit older and a bit wiser, but they have that person there who's just that extra ear, that extra, that steady hand for them to be able to turn to in those moments. You see when Rafa Nadal, uh, Djokovic, I, I personally, I'm a Federer guy, but Federer shoots that shot and it misses. He looks up to his coach and his coach is just like, remember what we said? Remember what we said? Just that reminder, that solid reminder, that you know, that guy couldn't come down and replace Roger on the court. No way. You'd get absolutely destroyed. But he's there as a he's there as a coach, he's there as a guide, an advisor, a mentor, and just to keep Roger straight. When times get tough and when times get good, they celebrate and they also commiserate together, but they pull out of it together. And uh, I like that one. Yeah, but it, you know, Roger's still got to to play right. the match, and that's the beauty of this. Uh, this maybe message. we could do a LinkedIn poll about whether it's a um, an expedition leader um, or, a, or a tennis coach. Yeah. So, so Rob does DIY, um, and he stands on the on the shoulders of giants of people that have done YouTube videos. Of course. <laughs> of course. It, yeah, let's... It, yeah. How do you make your washing machine? Well, you, the first thing you do is you reach to YouTube. And... That's yeah. savage. I, he that must have sad. when he was when he was doing the uh, the the yard fence. He must have looked up the YouTube video on how to hire a contractor, <laughs> how to get them to work for free. <laughs> Oof, Excellent, that's brutal. Yeah, big time. Tough on that note, <laughs> where my GPS, it, it's everything. You know. The, the problem is, is if you buy a piece of software, how do you know it's going to get you to where you want to get to? You just plug and play it, right? And you you do all this training. But at the end of the day, your people have got to deliver. And so I think the most important thing is when you're when you're looking at selecting a guide, is that person going to eat what they cook? Right. And we talk about this all the time. Like those call you made that point, Tim. I forget where it was. You're like, well, why should I trust these cold calling people? If it was so good, why are they always on LinkedIn? You know, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was for me, cold calling died. There's a, there's a, there's a very famous cold caller who wrote a book and he basically wrote a load of stuff about social selling. No, just said it was shit. He just didn't, he didn't, there was no, nothing to back it up. So his cold calling is great. And you go all the way 200 pages. And at the end it says, you can contact me on my social profiles. <laughs> and it's like, no, 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 no! It doesn't work like that. No, no. it's 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 so. Send send I me your phone. Send laugh. me your phone number on LinkedIn, and I'll I'll give you a call. Yeah. So I, I got a story for you, right? So like I used to do referral training all the time, lots of referral training, and this brings back to social. And people would always be like, "Well, how do I get more referrals?" I'm like, "Well, how do you buy? How do you buy?" And they're like, "What do you mean?" Well. This was a while ago, so we pulled out these things that some of you may not have heard of called a checkbook, like where you uh, write checks to people. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's an old concept. You can look it up on YouTube, I'm sure. <laughs> but I would ask them, I would ask them to go through their checkbook and evaluate their purchasing. And and I always say, don't complain about buying on price when that's the only way you buy. If you're buying on relationship and you want other people to buy from you because of how virtuous you are, how much you care about them, you damn well better do the same yourself. And that's the thing when you're picking a guide, like picking some of these people. There you go. Tim, you should be proud. That was restraint. Picking some of these people on LinkedIn that don't do any real social selling is like having the world's fattest man be your mountain guide to the top Everest. They're not going to get out of base camp. They're going to tell you a concept, but they're not going to understand how to walk up the mountain. Rob. Yes. You're not saying much. 
I, I'm still distraught over I, I identified as a Sherpa and now I know what I really am. <laughs> you were the bag carrier. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The caddy. <laughs> so so my one caveat to get a guide, and it's not really a caveat, it's just and and not but and um challenge them. This is serious, right? This is super serious. This is super, super serious. Usually when we meet people. We're meeting management teams because there's a problem, there's an issue, um, and many times they've they've uh, wasted money by looking for a shortcut, whether that's with tech or with the wrong people. Um, get a guide for sure, but challenge that guide and absolutely challenge that guide. Look for references and ask them straight: Have you taken a management team from a very delicate analog position through Good. to becoming becoming? Uh, expert in social selling and strategic social media challenge them ask them ask for reference um and if it's not there you, the same question why should i trust the cold caller that's trying to sell me cold calling on linkedin um it's uh, it's all it has to be based in reference you need to be putting if you're going to be doing this and we talk about the difference between the one hour master class for 150 dollars that's going to make you a social selling genius through through our 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 view on this which is about strategic social media and digital do dominance if you're going to do this properly this is proper proper business transformation you are taking your business from one position to another and we want that to be sustainable the only way we can make that sustainable so that when we leave and we unplug ourselves from this whole process is um to make sure that, that we're working at the highest possible level and we're leaving you in, in, in a position where you've been you've been educated You've changed process, changed language, changed the whole syntax of the organization in a sustainable way that continues on for growth. It's got to be there. So um, just to, to finish up, um, I'll just let Rob disappear, but I'll let him back in, in again. Um, this this was about five minutes to this was an experiment. Yeah. To, to, you know, we ran the clubhouse and then what we wanted to do was try and run a LinkedIn live uh through restream and see and, and and debate all the things that we had in in clubhouse um I, i'm interested also from the um the people watching their feedback was this useful was it um a waste of time um should we do it again um is there a way that we could make it better um i'm obviously you, you don't need to tell us how to make it worse um but is there a way you can make it better um you know, i'm really interested in people's feedback because this was an experiment we wanted to see whether you know we talked on clubhouse about moving people from different platforms um and um i'm really interested to hear from you guys and what, what you've got to say i think that's a, i think it's a beautiful i mean the fact that our topic today on clubhouse was you know multi-platforming omni-channeling all of that and yet here we are we're actually living yeah. proof that it's working it's beautiful um I, just a quick comment from me i really like the restream uh, vibe it's obvious, in here it's beautiful i like the way the questions pop up for the panel yeah. in, the, in the large piece i think it's what's that i'm the sherpa that that does the right you're the sherpa that does that yeah. do you put those up there is that how the yeah yeah yeah. So, yeah so you can uh yeah so um um is 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 roger i like this i think it's i think it's a really nice uh it'd be good to hear from our audience as well as if they've been on other lives is this the best live kind of format? I really like it. I think it's terrific. So I'm going to go with Restream for my my first live. Restream. Rest, restroom is cool stuff, says Gary. I think he might mean Restream. <laughs> is it tongue in cheek? Yeah, is that correct? Right? <laughs> Thanks, That's Gary. Mate, right Thanks, Gary. It, it is. He's, he's, he's English, but he's now got American um, citizenship. So, But he's still got a sense of humor. It really, he has absolutely. Oh. He was British. He still understands irony. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that that's that's kind of cool. But this is the um, um, uh, this is the this is this this is the free version um, because it's got. Re I can get um, you've got restream um, uh, logo, um, but it's you know I can bring people in. Um, I can bring the um, uh, you know. You should you should have put like real check actually Roger but yeah I like it better um, the only advantage Clubhouse is is that people can talk synchronously with you but you know I, I think that for people that are 
want to contribute but don't necessarily want to speak live that this is a a good format um yeah, yeah I thought, it, by the way and you're way great you're great Barry. and um the way it, it you can you can decide where to restream so it, it's restreamed through periscope onto twitter onto my youtube channel um and um on my facebook personal facebook page and and then obviously my linkedin page using linkedin live and I checked your YouTube channel. That's a lovely stream on there. So it's, you're streaming. I checked YouTube because you, you never know That's if you're nice checking your own. Yeah. Nice stream. And also, I like the fact that um, with the new setup, obviously, with um, with uh, with creator mode coming in and all of that, when I look at when we look at Tim's profile, the live is the banner, the headline banner. It's beautiful. So people can just click and join if they land on his profile and go and see, oh, Tim's doing a live right now. We'll, we'll go in and join it. So yes, so great. Also, what you can do is you can reach, is that, so, um, yeah, Gar this is what Gary says. So what, what you can do is if you have a really good chat, what I can do is I can then replay this for um, maybe, you know, California time um, and not actually have to attend. Is that not on restroom? Is that Oracle time? It's on restroom, yeah. It's on you restroom. Got you got to get restroom to get. <laughs> it's 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 Oracle time, right? Not not, yeah. not uh, California time. Re yeah, re yeah, restroom. <laughs> uh, and was this was this easy to do? Did you just simply open up, invite people, and hit go live? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was pretty. Yeah, it took me, you know, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes to set it up. Outstanding. <laughs> The, the only the only thing I've had to learn is how to use Canva, but I need to do that anyway. So, um, um, you know, there's the skills that you've got, you've got, you've got to learn things, haven't you? To do what? To put a bit of a logo up and stuff? Yeah, to, you need to, if you don't put a logo, the first time I did it, I didn't put a logo up and it looks just looks rubbish. So you, you need to have a, some sort of banner to, to put on. So I had to go and create something on Canva, but. Yeah. But it's not, it's not up today. Yeah. It's not on, it's not here. Your, your Canva banner isn't here. Um, no, no, sorry. To, to when you promote it, right? Yes. What happens is it goes automatically onto your all the different profile, all the different social media channels, and you need to have an image on the front. Otherwise, it just look. It's just a, you know, blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I and I I've never done that before. Even though I've done two hundred podcasts, I've never created images for it. I <laughs> just didn't. We so need to, we need to bring Eric, Eric's daughter on as our staff designer. Yeah, she's got, she's got a new job, so uh, we we missed the boat. She gone. Yeah, she's gone. Got a proper job. That's that's America. She gone. Uh, I really enjoyed this, guys. I thought it was great. I'm going to have to split. Yeah, I need to go. Yeah, as Thanks well. So Thank you, everybody, for attending. Thank you for the audience for and all the wonderful, great questions. Um, thank you so much. I think we've got a um, um, you know going round everybody. I think we're all in, and um, yeah, yeah. Um, we'll do this again. Awesome. Loved it. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody. I need to work out how to switch it off now.